Well, earlier today I spoke to the Secretary of State for Health, Jeremy Hunt, and I began by asking him whether he still subscribed to his previously expressed view that doctors were only striking because they lack the wit to properly understand the deal he has offered to them. The problem we had is that uh, the BMA were not prepared to sit around and discuss this in a reasonable so, way. So this is a yes, doctors do still lack the wit to understand the force of the offer you're making them? No, I think that uh, many doctors don't actually understand the contents of the new contract and nor do they understand how hard the government has worked to try and reach an accommodation and that's a great tragedy. We've actually had 75 meetings over the three year period. We looked at the, the number of concessions we've made and I, I just say this that I think the reasonable approach for a union when a government is trying to implement a manifesto commitment is to sit down and talk because this is something that will make the NHS safer and better. So the manifesto commitment of course was to the principle of a seven day NHS, not, not to the detail and the, and the detail is interesting. You mentioned that the doctors may not have read the contract, I, I've been in touch with a few who have, all 80 pages of it and, and the appendices. We know that it positively discriminates against women, especially single mothers, that's contained within the rubric mm -hmm. of the contract itself, it's a concession from your own department. We know that under the terms of the new rota you can finish your shift at one or two in the morning and yet be expected to start your next one at five o'clock the following afternoon, quite how that allows uh, work family balance or indeed travel to and from hospital is open to some speculation and we also know that there's no mandate if you're doing too many hours for your supervisor to report it to the hospital guardian. So again it would seem the doctors may understand the terms of this contract rather better than you're giving them credit for. Well, it's interesting because all the things that you've just mentioned are areas where we actually reached agreement with the BMA when we had negotiations in February. So the aspects of the contract to do with safety involve... Right. Everything uh, I just said is contained within the current contract. Yes, and the, what the current contract is, it contains, uh, about 90% of it was actually agreed with the BMA uh, when I lifted the imposition of the contract in December to see if we could allow space for negotiations. The, the two outstanding areas of disagreement were um, to do with the Saturday pay rates um, and another aspect of antisocial hours working. But if you look at Saturday pay, uh, what we're actually offering doctors is more premium pay for people who work regularly at weekends than nurses, paramedics, than healthcare assistants who work in their own operating theatres, uh, more incidentally than police officers or fire officers. It is uh, a very fair package. Um, and, uh, and so I think, you know, on that basis, withdrawing emergency care from patients who depend on you is a very disproportionate action. Doctors are reportedly heading across the borders into Scotland and Wales and Northern Ireland to take up jobs that won't be subject to the current contract. And, and the general feeling among the junior and senior doctors, most of whom are in support of the strike in this country, is that their profession is being denuded and denigrated. So why not just meet the costs if that really is the only bone of contention? Well. Let's look at the money we are putting into the NHS. This year we're putting in an extra three so points. With respect, an answer to the question. It is I'm a direct asking. answer to the question. You said, why not meet the costs? We are putting in an extra 3.8 billion. To pay them as they if you could let me answer pay. the question. I shall. We are putting in an extra 3.8 billion pounds into the NHS this year. Uh, this government is passionate about the NHS and what it stands for. And this year it will be getting the sixth biggest increase in its history. And part of that additional money is to pay for the costs, the extra costs of a seven day NHS. But we also know from the mistakes, frankly, of previous governments, that with that increase in resources, you need to have a change in working practices if we're going to be able to offer patients that same high quality care every day of the week. And what we are saying is in order for hospitals to be able to roster more people at weekends, we do need to bring down the premiums paid on Saturdays. It's still more generous than pretty much anywhere else in the public sector. But we'll make sure that no doctor's out of pocket by putting up basic pay by 13 and a half percent. Now that is... But you uh, know that the antisocial banding hours make up around 30 to 50 percent of many doctors pay at the moment. So 13 percent increase in basic pay barely begins to plug that gap. Well again that is misinformation because um, they are not going to get no premium pay for antisocial hours. You have lots of small issues, but then you have the issues of substance and the BMA's own words were that the only two ones were to do with pay. And I think many people will say, if it's an argument about weekend pay uh, for a professional, 
withdrawing emergency care is a step too far. You, you must be unhappy about how personal this has become and the fact that many doctors feel that even if the impasse is to be breached, it would not be achievable on, on your watch. Is that what you were perhaps subconsciously referring to this morning when you said this would be your last big job in politics? Quite the opposite. What I've always said is that I want to do this job for five years. I want to be the Secretary of State who uh, learns the lessons from mid-staffs and sets the NHS on a path to be the safest, highest quality healthcare system in the world. Secretary of State, many thanks. Thank you.